Hey, so uh, like like uh, Professor Morthy said, um, my name is Brian Zeit. So I was class of 2010, and I came in in 2005. So I did a bachelor's for four years, and then a master's for one year. So pretty much right after the uh, bachelor's, and I did computer engineering. So, but I gravitated towards software a lot, and I just found that that was where I wanted to work. So I worked on that, and I did a lot of cool projects, did a lot of stuff that's actually still in use here at RPI. Um, our digital signage system all open source. It's actually being used around the world now. So we've got um, lots of people, and we're, we're working on version 2 now. So we actually hope that that's going to be even more accessible. And uh, I actually went to Sandia for a couple reasons. I had never worked on these big systems. On, um, what in the college environment might be called enterprise systems, but I had never actually done anything like that. I'm, I'm looking for new challenges, new things that sort of broaden my horizons. And Sandia was really cool for a number of reasons. It was a flexible place where people all said, hey, you can come to work in whatever you feel comfortable in. It sort of has some elements of, of startup culture or hacker culture, that kind of stuff. Um, but at the same time, it, it's got so many cool projects. And these aren't just, you know, it's great to build a social network. And it's great to build, you know, uh, all this stuff. I'm sorry. I wasn't, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't trying to give you a cool or anything. Like that. <laughs> that's all awesome. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk crap about it. That's awesome. And I love that stuff too. And I don't know what I'm gonna be working on in the future, but who knows. So at Sandia, what we do we're, we're viewed as sort of a, a science and technology bastion, in a sense, because for the, for the nation and for the mission of, of, of this country, um, Cindy has a very important role, along with the other national labs. So um, we work on many different science and technology projects for, um, what is it, in the, in the service of the nation, I guess you could say. So if, uh, in the case of Hurricane Katrina, we had people who were involved with uh, modeling and analysis for the levee system, um, for the Deepwater Horizon uh, oil spill. We had people who were out in the Gulf who were studying the environmental impacts. We had a lot of different things that covered a wide spectrum. And so San is really great for that. And the cool thing is that you can start on something in some group and then there's so much going on at the labs. There's like 8,000 people in New Mexico, 1,000 people in California, right outside of Silicon Valley. <laughs> and uh, they're all doing cool stuff that makes a difference. You know, that's, that's what I really want to say. Because I, I believe in it. You know, I, I've seen a lot of amazing things that lead me to conclude that. It's not just the San Diego sales pitch. So what I ended up doing within a year, I've, I've had impact with three different areas. So I started with uh, a satellite ground system and uh, did some work there. A system unlike anything I'd ever worked on before. So I was really interested in web, still am, still will be, but you know this was unlike anything that I worked on before. We've got hardware people, we've got software people, we've got integration people, mechanisms people. You know, using C++ and Python and Java and all these other different languages and frameworks for many different purposes. Um, I worked with a radar group where um, I actually, within a matter of about three months, I, I designed and developed software for them. I used Qt, open source GUI framework, um, Dominant. And I did a lot of my work in that. Got a lot of cool experience there. Worked with actual people who use the software in the field. And so I was able to get my, my design background and use that to, to create things that, that really helped people, helped uh, protect people. So the latest thing, though, that I want to talk about real quick, and Karen had a whole lot of other stuff to talk about, open source at San Diego Labs. Now you might think, well, oh, it's a government lab. You're doing a whole bunch of stuff. So what is open source at a national laboratory? Well. Open source is alive and well, and thriving at San Diego. And so I'm going to talk real quick about what I'm doing most, most recently. I actually started working with uh, some very influential design people at San Diego. And what I'm doing now is, is I'm working on, uh, as a lead designer, for a web application that we're sort of, the group is almost like a startup. That we, don't, we don't even operate in the same way that the rest of the labs operate. We do things differently. And we're looking for people with different talents. We're looking for people who really care about building software that's not just good at what it does and valuable,
but also is, is fun or easy to use for the people who need to use it. You know, so we're taking a lot of different traits from, from the startup culture, from, from technology and how it's been evolving. And we're actually uh, using a lot of open source uh, frameworks and, and different things like uh, Twitter Bootstrap recently came out. It uh, was created by Twitter engineers and a whole lot of people have gotten involved in its development. And we're actually probably going to use it for uh, one of our first flagship applications. But well, we're going to add to it. You know, we don't just view at Sandia that we're just going to take stuff because that's not what open source is about. Open source is about leveraging things that allow you to, you know, in, in some ways, get, get to a place faster than you would if you had to build all of yourself. But at the same point, turn it back. Become a member of a community where you can really have impact and uh, you know, do things that other people would want to use. And in turn, leverage and build off. So um, we're, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff like that. We're going to be talking at all sorts of conferences and, and uh, you know, with different, different other groups around the country. And we have this base that the national labs do really well. And uh, we're going to sort of use that to our advantage. So I'm not going to talk much more about what I do. I think that Karen, Karen's stuff is even more interesting for the open source bend. But I did want to say that if anybody's interested in a job at a national lab, we're looking for people of all different disciplines, engineering, science, computer scientists. We're looking for designers. Obviously, in my group, we're looking for even artists who can help create awesome user interface elements. So you know, it's not like, uh, like we're looking for just one particular type. We've got mechanical engineers and all your friends in all these different disciplines. So if you're interested in a career at San Diego, or at least learning more about it, I would urge you to uh, either contact me, I can send out my email, or even go to sandia.gov, it's S-A-N-D-I-A.gov. So um, with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Karen Vine. She was, uh, <laughs> she, uh, what year were you, Karen, at RPI? She graduated in 1994 with a PhD in Computer science and then was Joe Flag. Pardon? The PhD advisor was Joe Flag. That's right, Joe Flag. It's just, it's half a reason. Anyway, I'll talk about me in a little bit. I'll talk to my laptop, for example, so talk about that. So um, I'm in a high performance computing group, so we're focused on parallel computing, multi core computing, GPU computing. Uh, it's uh, about 150 people roughly divided into three parts, and we'll see some of each of those parts um, if my laptop ever gets out of its font. Um, the, uh, the first area is focused on architectures and operating systems, systems level software, uh, some of the co-design uh, that's going to go on uh, nowadays in making algorithms work well with these architectures, as well as designing architectures that will work well with algorithms, are both uh, in that part of our center. We have another part focused on informatics and, and, and graph algorithms, data mining, problems like that. And then a third part that's uh, focused on physical simulation. And let it go back, really go to sleep. I need this too. Sometimes when I get out of sync, I take a nap. <laughs> I apologize for this. How many PhDs does it take to get a laptop? Uh, the third part is focused on, on physical simulation and uh, physics based uh, chemical uh, mechanics, things like that. So let me let me get this going here. Well, I, what I'd like to show you is, is just some examples of the open source software that we do at Sandia. And as, as uh, Brian alluded to, you think why would a, a government lab uh, be developing open source technology. Well, in truth, we have a mandate for most of our funding agencies to do open source software release. They're giving us uh, funding to do fundamental research, and that fundamental research should be made uh, available to the uh, academic, the industry, the research community. And so uh, as part of our mandate, and as well as part of our effort to build uh, Sandia's reputations, to build our reputations, to get our uh, research distributed, we've had a, a high emphasis on open source release for about a decade. So I'm going to show some examples today. If you want to see more examples, you can go to our download page. We can uh, download uh, uh, most of the things I'll talk about today, as well as uh, additional software in the areas of cognitive science, uh, database type systems, 
optimization. But, but, but today I'm going to talk about um, four, just four projects because I want to take a lot of your time. The first is a lightweight operating system kernel called Kitten for massively parallel computers. So the massively parallel computers are generally constructed uh, either from special uh, chips or from commodity components. You, know, you might put together a cluster of uh, processors that uh, you could buy uh, for your laptops or for your uh, desktops. Uh, so these machines get put together, and if we, if we load a full heavyweight Linux operating system kernel on them, there's too much interference, there's too much noise and jitter from the various Linux demons and processes that are running to efficiently use them uh, for these parallel systems, because some processor will get caught up with a little demon, all the rest have to be. So what Sandy has worked on for a number of years, uh, I, uh, probably two decades, is, is operating system kernels for these massively parallel computers. So the goal is to support message passing and uh, parallel execution uh, to offer a suitable, a good enough environment for us to develop and to use these applications on the parallel machines. But we're really going to emphasize efficiency over functionality. So it's a, it's a subset of what you would expect from a regular operating system. Uh, the kitten uh, repurposes much of the basic functionality from Linux. It'll boot just like Linux, but it innovates in some key areas. So uh, doing memory management on these parallel systems, as well as multi-core uh, message optimization, so that when we're within a core, we're not sending messages to other processors. Uh, we're just doing native uh, sharing uh, within a core, uh, within, a, within a processor. Uh, features like that, runtime support, uh, so that we can see the status of the system as it's going. Uh, support for virtualization, where we can uh, have uh, one operating system running, but uh, simulate a different operating system on top of that. And if you're interested in that, the point of contact for that is Kevin Kudrow. So kind of at the other extreme, we do uh, numerical simulations of uh, physical problems. Uh, and CHISELS is one example of that. So CHISELS stands for Chemically Induced Surface Evolution of Level Sets. But basically what it's doing is a simulation of the surfaces in nanostructures. So you might have some uh, computational fluid dynamics type simulation, uh, in this case a code called MP salsa, that models the fluid flow within a, a, a chemical vapor deposition reactor. At the smaller micron feature scale, chisels can model the particular features that are being formed during the deposition. And then that can be linked with some other package, say like Pemkin, uh, that does the detailed surface chemistry of the atomistic lab. Uh, so this, this is being used at Sandia in the area for MEMS, Microelectromechanical micro Systems Design. Now to make all these uh, codes work well on parallel computers, all the physics-based code, we need to do something called load balancing. And in load balancing, what we're trying to do is minimize the execution time by keeping all the processors busy, we don't want any processor sitting idle waiting for other processors. And we also want to minimize the amount of talking between the processors in order to get, uh, so that they're spending less time talking to each other and more time doing actual computing. So an example, and this, this is an example from Chisels actually, uh, where they're doing a simulation of chemical vapor deposition around this feature. And uh, they're doing some sort of adaptive meshing uh, around that in, in order to capture the high resolution or to get a high resolution solution of this, uh, around this feature. And in order to distribute that on the parallel system, they have to assign different chunks of it to processors. And in this, in this case, the colors are indicating which processor is going to do the local computation on that set of cells. And then at some synchronization points, they can communicate information as needed between processors. Uh, this mesh changes adaptively as the surface evolves, and so the the job of distributing the work has to be done as the mesh adapts. And that's what the job of a toolkit called Zoltan that I'm going to investigate on. Uh, Zoltan is an application tool uh, for applications like Chisels, but we also use it as an algorithm and test bed for developing new algorithms. Uh, and our current research is support, uh, going to be looking at support for multi-core systems where we're doing some combination of uh, message passing and threading Within, this, within the systems, excuse me. Now Zoltan, uh, next slide. Zoltan is part of a larger package called Trilinos. <coughs> Trilinos uh, 
is basically a collection of open source tools like Zoltan. Uh, and these tools can be put together in, in little parts, sort of like you would uh, if you, I don't know, do people do you use Tinker Toys anymore? <laughs> Maybe Legos is the better example now. But you take all these little bitty parts, they're all a little bit different, but they fit together nicely. And from all these little bitty parts that, that aren't really much by themselves, you can build these immense and massive and very impressive uh, toys. In our case, we're building simulations, so uh, physics-based simulations where <laughs> there are parts in Julianos that can help represent the mathematical model, move it to a numerical model by doing some sort of discretization of the problem through uh, <clears throat> both the space and time domains. Uh, then apply algorithms such as linear, nonlinear solvers, eigenvalue solvers, optimization methods uh, to these uh, uh, numerical models in order to do a computation. And so Trilina, Trilinos is really an immense framework. It's uh, all, all very loosely integrated from a software engineering point of view uh, in the sense that uh, you can build some components of it without building all of the components of it. So in that sense, it's more a toolkit. Like you can use your hammer and still leave your screwdriver in the box. But it does have an integrated build system so that it's easy for someone to take whatever pieces and parts they want and put them together into a single simulation. And that, that build system is uh, run by CMake. Uh, I don't know if you use CMake for uh, the tools around here. Uh, yeah, and it's all shares with common source code repository. CMake is done by Kickware people so that many of the students use CMake. Oh, okay. Very good. Very good. Um, and then uh, all the, the packages are in a common source code repository that in our case is Git. So, so this is just kind of a flavor of some of the projects at Sandia. Like I said, if you want to see more, uh, you're invited to go to the website on the first line. And thanks. Thank you. Thank you for to, to Dr. Krishnan for having us. Well, it's really, fantastic. Really nice. So I think it's a great day. It's always great to see students excel the teachers. So that's why I gave a brilliant talk. And Karen used to do it when I gave a lecture on semantics of programming languages. I still that's remember that. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank you. That's.